One other thing we can look at in terms of our inverse functions is the relationship between the domain and range. So if you look at this, f of x is equal to the square root of x minus one, you can see the graph that's represented by that, and we can find those by plugging in values. If you look at the domain, we can find the domain of our nice little function. The domain, of course, is the x's, since it's continuous, we can use the minimum x value of negative two and the maximum x value of positive infinity. Negative two, of course, is included in our sets, therefore we put it in a bracket. Our range is similar but also different because now we're talking about the y values. So when you look, the minimum y value will be zero and the maximum y value will be positive infinity. Zero is included. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the graph of the inverse function. So all we have to do to find the inverse is to switch the x and y's. So negative two comma zero will be zero comma negative two. Negative one comma one will be one comma negative one. Two comma two will actually be the exact same spot. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven comma three will be three comma seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is what the graph of our inverse function will look like. And as you can see, that inverse function, the domain, is actually going to be zero comma infinity. And your range for the inverse function will be negative two comma infinity. So it doesn't take uh, too much to recognize the fact that with your original function f of x and your inverse function, that the domain and range has switched. And that should make sense because that's what we do to find the inverse of a function. And since we can actually come up with our inverse function, we can actually figure out that our inverse function is going to be basically half of a quadratic. So if you look, it's going to be x squared and then shift it down to, but in, uh, since it's not a full quadratic, we can limit the domain and say x is that or greater than or equal to zero.